Hello, and welcome back to the Fluctish Channel. The United States Air Force has some of the planet's most advanced aircraft and weapon systems. However, few people know that the workforce of this airborne fleet is more than 70 years old. Introduced in 1955, the B-52 Strato Fortress has long served as a proud symbol of American air power. Even today, the long-range strategic bomber remains integral to the country's emergency aerial response strategy. The first thing about the B-52 is just the historical presence that it carries with it. I think when the enemy sees the B-52 fly overhead, it, it strikes fear into their hearts. Uh, and that's something that we absolutely want to take advantage of. The B-52 has served in every major U.S. conflict since Vietnam. However, it was primarily developed as a Cold War-era threat deterrent. In the event of an international attack or emergency, B-52 squadrons located at bases around the world would spring into action, taking off with either conventional or nuclear payloads. While the Cold War itself is over, the threat of large-scale war is not. For that reason, modern B-52 crews are still trained for rapid preparation and pre-flight checks, ensuring that they can get up in the air as soon as possible. While the crews can be ready in a matter of minutes, the same can't be said for the aircraft. From cold, it can take between 30 and 45 minutes for a standard B-52. However, the U.S. Air Force has developed several solutions to this problem. The latest is a new engine cover that can help prevent ice building and damage from extreme cold. The covers, which wrap around all of the engine components, are likely to be integral in preventing takeoff delays and reducing maintenance. I think it's important to be a B-52 pilot uh, because the B-52 is the most visible leg of the nuclear triad. And with that, uh, we provide a sense of security to our nation and our allies. For decades, the most effective method of getting a B-52 up in the air quickly is to use what's known as a cartridge warm-up or cart start. This process involves using solid propellant cartridges, which generate hot, high-pressure gases to spin the turbine and compressor sections of the engine. During the pre-flight process, the crew will give the signal to initiate the engine start sequence. At this point, an electrical charge ignites the cartridges, producing a sudden burst of hot gas and smoke. This causes the engines to roar to life. As a result, the B-52 can be in the air in as little as 10 to 15 minutes. With its 185-foot wingspan 
and a maximum takeoff weight of over 480,000 pounds, the B-52 is by no means a fast or maneuverable aircraft, especially on the ground. However, one of the unique features of the aircraft is its bicycle landing gear, which consists of four dual wheel pods that can all swivel independently. This allows the massive aircraft to make tighter turns than many other aircraft its size. It also allows for a process called crabbing, in which the back or forward landing gear can make small adjustments to keep the aircraft moving in a straight line. Crabbing is also useful during landing, especially when crosswinds prevent the aircraft from making a straight approach to the runway. This process allows the pilot to keep the B-52's fuselage at an angle while its landing gear remains aligned with the runway. To bring the 240-ton behemoth to a complete stop, pilots employ drag chutes, which can be deployed from the tail section to reduce speed, ensuring a safe and controlled stop. The relationship between the U.S. Air Force and Rolls-Royce, the British luxury car and aero engine company, is one of the oldest in the world, dating back to the 1950s. Currently, Rolls-Royce engines power some of the most important aircraft in the U.S. arsenal, including the C-130, KC-130, and the RQ-4 Global Hawk. With the announcement that the U.S. Air Force plans to keep B-52s flying until at least 2050, top military leaders turned to Rolls-Royce to develop new engines. The answer was the Rolls-Royce F-130, a military variant of the Rolls-Royce BR-725 used in business jets. The engines are just one part of the B-52 strategic revitalization and modernization program. Early B-52 models relied on Pratt & Whitney power plants, which have become more problematic over the aircraft's 70-year service life. The new Rolls-Royce F-130s promises to provide dramatically increased fuel efficiency, reduced maintenance, and better reliability. Combined with the other upgrades, such as improved radar system, new weapons, and new avionics, these new engines will make this already formidable foe even more capable. With new engines, a new radar, as well as a new comm suite, isn't going to be the same B-52 that we flew in Vietnam. It's going to be something relevant that will keep our adversaries on their toes and afraid uh, for years to come. Rolls-Royce is still testing the F-130 engines to ensure the company can make changes to the design if necessary. In 2023, multiple tests took place at the NASA Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. This was actually the first time that the two F-130 engines were tested together in the dual engine pod configuration, which is how they will actually be installed aboard the B-52. There were also tests on crosswind performance and the electronic engine control systems. For 
both Rolls-Royce and the USAF, the tests were a major step forward for the B-52 revitalization project. While the B-52 represents the enduring past, the B-1B Lancer is the modern backbone of America's long-range strike capability. Designed as a supersonic strategic bomber back in the mid-1980s, the B-1 has undergone a series of critical battle station upgrades that enhance its electronic warfare systems, weapons integration, and mission capabilities. Though it was only introduced in 1986, the rapid pace of technology means the Air Force is currently looking at options to extend the viable service life of the B-1 as well. Aside from structural repairs, the military has invested significant money and technology into the new integrated battle station. At a cost of around $1 billion, this upgrade dramatically enhanced the aircraft's situational awareness, communications, and weapons management capabilities. It also replaced outdated monochrome cockpit displays with full-color digital displays and a new diagnostic system. One of the most significant efforts to extend the B-1 service life is the introduction of the B-1B maintenance trainer. Constructed from a decommissioned B-1, this trainer will help ensure maintenance crews are equipped with the knowledge and hands-on experience needed to keep these bombers in peak condition. When moving the vehicle to its new home, Tinker Air Force Base fully retracted the wings, which necessitated the application of counterweights. Once in position, the retractable wings were extended once again. Converting old or less functional aircraft into trainers has proven to be a major cost saver for the U.S. military. The F-15, for example, has been the subject of a similar project. Codenamed the Eagle, the F-15 was developed by McDonnell Douglas back in the 1970s. It spent the next decade or so as the United States' premier air superiority fighter. Currently, the F-15C and D variants are due to be retired by the mid-2020s, while the E variant will remain in the air for another 10 years. Still, these decommissioned F-15s can still serve a very important purpose as ground instructional training aircraft. In this capacity, they act as real-life practice dummies for ground crews, mechanics, and weapons specialists, basically allowing for hands-on experience without the risks associated with live aircraft. The journey from the airbase to the training ground can be a hazardous one, as F-15s are 63 feet long and boast a wingspan of 42 feet. Once it arrives, crews will remove hazardous materials, strip outdated systems, and reinforce structural components to withstand years of use as an instructional platform. They're really stoked. They're, they're learning something. They're, they're excited to get something new to get their hands on to, to, to learn at Haney. This has a lot of the, the systems that we're talking about. It has an oxygen system, it has pressurization for fuel cells, 
Uh, it has the engines. Uh, it's just got so much more than just a, a general aviation aircraft has that we can use. While they will never take to the skies again, they will continue to shape the next generation of fighter aircraft maintenance teams. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.